Hey guys, it's me again, uh, Coach Campbell, with some help on your calculating gravity activity, okay, as well as your gravity and freefall lab. Okay, so yesterday we did the ruler drop as well as the one where we dropped the tennis ball and we collected all those numbers. If you did that at home, hopefully you got some good numbers, hopefully you had fun doing so. Now we're going to go into some of the data collecting and answering some of these questions, right? So predict your reaction time. Well, what do you suppose your reaction time could have been? You should have written this value in. Well, it's obvious that your reaction time shouldn't be more than, what, like three seconds? Unless you're really slow. But uh, I don't think you guys are going to be that slow. So you guys just pick a reasonable range of values where you can predict your reaction time. It, is, it, is it also reasonable to say your reaction time is zero seconds? Like 0, 0.0 seconds? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think so. So pick a reasonable range of values for yourself there. All right. Now convert everything into meters. So notice here we've got our, our centimeter conversions. And we're going to convert that to meters. Remember, if we're going from centimeters to meters, we're going to move our decimal once, twice to the left. So here we have 15. We're going to move it once, twice to the left. That'd be 0 0.15. Okay. And so on. So this will be 0 0.115. Okay. And then you'll calculate your average. Remember, to calculate your average. Good morning. Okay, we're back. So it says compute your reaction time for your average distance. Now that's the next question. Show the equation that you used and your calculation. Okay, so the only thing that we can use is, well, we found the distance that it traveled, right? It traveled from zero down to however far you grabbed it at. In this case, 15 centimeters or 0.15. Um, then you'll have your average. So that's going to be like your change in x, your x final minus your x initial. Remember that your x initial should have just been 0, right? And your x final is going to be a negative value of whatever you get here. So if it fell 0 0.15, then you'll put negative 0 0.15. I'm going to assume that my average is 0 0.20 meters. And that way I'm not doing the work for you, okay? Because you should have a different answer for your average. And I don't want to do the work for you. I don't want to give it away, but I do want to help you out. Okay, so x final, remember it's negative 0.20 because it dropped down. Negative 20 minus zero, that's going to be your xf minus xi, okay? So anyways, so the only thing that we know is the distance that it traveled. Our formula for that is here. Okay, I fast forwarded that so you can... There's the equation right there. XF is equal to XI plus VIT. That's velocity initial times time. Plus one half times your acceleration due to gravity. Negative 9.8. And your time. So we don't know what the time is. So that's what we're finding, right? Okay, so we do know what XF is. We said negative 20. In my case, I'm sorry, negative 0.20, okay, equals xi was 0 plus, what's our initial velocity? If we dropped the ruler, right, if we dropped the ruler, what's our initial velocity as we let go? Well, it should be stopped because we're holding it, right? If it stopped when we're holding it and we let go, its initial velocity is 0. 0 times anything, so that t is just, I'm just going to put all that into 0 plus one half, our gravity is negative 9.8, and then you'll have your time, which is what we're solving for, squared. Okay, I'll help you set it up just a little bit more. We're going to have negative 0.20 is equal to, well, how it's half of negative 9.8. Half times negative 9.8, negative 4.9. Okay, the zero plus zero, just leave it alone. Negative 4.9 times t squared. It's multiplying. So we're going to have to divide both sides by that number. And then once we do, we'll have t squared is equal to whatever that is. Okay? We'll get an answer for, for whatever this is. Whatever that is is going to go here, right? And that's equal to t squared. Well, then we want to get t by itself. So in order to get rid of the squared, we're going to square root it, okay? So we're going to square root whatever we got there. And that's going to be our final answer. 
then that's going to be our final answer right here. Okay. And then we'll circle our final answer. Remember what's our unit for time and record that in your data table. And then find out if your answer is reasonable. Okay. You came up with something like 100 seconds. Chances are you weren't very reasonable on your calculation. All right. Predict the free fall time for an object falling two meters using the free fall equation for time. Okay. So predict the free fall time. Once more, we're solving for time. Here's your equation over here. I already put it for you. If you wanted to just use these values, T is equal to the square root of all that stuff. That's XF minus XI minus VIT. Well, velocity initial, if it's an object that's falling, once again, just like the ruler, that VIT is going to be zero. So I'm just going to choose to not write that down. Okay, and then we're going to have one half of A. Okay, and you're going to use those values. Well, if it fell two meters, what's your X final? I think it'd be zero. It fell two meters, so your X initial would be two, right? And then you divide all that stuff. Remember, acceleration is negative 9.8. I'll let you guys get that answer, okay? Cool. All right, so then you're going to be over here, right? So say that my data table, assume my average to be equal to our, our average time, right? We're measuring this, this time. Average, let's assume my average is like um, 0 0.8. 0.80, which it's not, right? It'd be like closer to 0 0.50 something. So it's, I'm going to say it's 0 0.80. That way we get to see me working it, but it's not going to be your answer. Okay, so your X final. Remember, your X final is 0. Your X final is 0. Well, your X initial was 2 still. It goes 1 half times g. Well, g is what we're calculating. We're solving for g. Okay. And t is what we got here. Okay. t is, in my case, 0 0.8. It won't be for you. Or maybe it will, but not for most of you. It shouldn't be. Okay. All right. 0 0.80 squared. Okay, well then we're gonna get a value for that. 0 0.80 squared is 0 0.64. So one half, I'm just gonna bring it on all over here. Zero minus two is negative two equals one half times, well, 0.80 squared, that's 0 0.64. And then we still have G, right? Simplifying down, half of 0 0.64, that's 0 0.32. G, if you follow. If not, then put me on slow motion in the bottom right of your settings. It should be down here somewhere. You can change the speed. And I'll talk slow. Sorry if I'm rushing. I have a class pretty soon. They're fixing to ring the bell on me. Okay, so I'm going to divide the 0.32 to get rid, the, rid of the, the coefficient for G. We want to solve for G, right? This number 0.32 is multiplying it. So what we do is divide, and we do that to both sides. So whatever that is, is going to be my answer for G. Okay, and uh, if I get my calculator out here, I find that negative 2 divided by 0.32 is negative 6.25, okay? And it's gravity, so that'd be like meters per second squared. So that's what I calculated gravity to be if it took 0.8 seconds for that ball to drop two meters. Which it didn't, right? So you should get a number hopefully closer to what we know to be gravity. I want you to think in your mind, what should that number be ideally? Negative 9.8, okay? So, all right, guys, good luck on the rest of that. I'm going to end the video here. Um, ask your teacher for questions if you have any more. Goodbye, and good luck.